Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Michael and Mom Talk Cancer. I am your host, Michael Kramer, and this is my... Mom! I think that I was supposed to come in there. He's got his radio voice going. Okay, Michael, go. Yes. All right, this is podcast episode number six. Six, and we're going to be talking about how our perspectives have changed throughout this whole journey this year. I'm just going to start with a little story right off the bat. Today, I went to Nicholas Children's Hospital in the morning. I had an ultrasound of my liver and spleen just to see what kind of what's going on. And then I had to get magnesium in the infusion unit. And after all of that in the morning, I had to head over to the University of Miami to meet with a specialist that specializes in joints because I have a vascular necrosis in my left knee which has been causing me a lot of pain. And it's one of the things that happened because of long-term steroid use, and it's basically death of the bone tissue due to lack of blood supply. So my body is pretty destroyed right now, to say the least. But when I went there, I got the news that I will need a knee replacement in the future. And for now, because I'm too immunosuppressed to go under surgery and the risk is more than the reward would be, they're going to start to put me on this like injection that will hopefully help with my pain. And this news was actually good to me. I was like, this is good. I'm going to get a knee replacement in the future. And hopefully I can return to just doing more normal things in my future. Because when I was told that the damage was irreversible at first, I was like, I'm never going to even be able to walk again. So I can't walk without any pain. So that's kind of how my perspective has changed. Because if two years ago you told me, you're gonna need a knee replacement and you might not be able to do anything you loved before. I would be so destroyed. But because of all I've been through and because of the little things I've learned to appreciate, like simply like walking, being told that I will be able to walk again made me so happy. And that's just how my perspective has changed. It's just appreciating things so much more than I did before. That is so true. I think appreciation is one of our big things. Um, that has changed a lot and exactly what Michael said Um, you know in the last I guess even it's been we've been talking about like the last year but just in the last 24 hours you know last last night your sister took the night off of dance and we were together and we went on a walk and we all we did was go and sit by the water and it was like the nicest night we just didn't do anything but we talked and you really do appreciate the little things so much more you appreciate that you're alive there is an author that i love charlie maxi i know some of you know this book i'm sure and there's a quote in there and it's is your glass half empty or half full asked the mole and the boy answers i think i'm grateful to have a glass And I feel like that's really our perspective this year is that we're not so worried about some of the things that we can't do, but more the things that we can do. Yeah, you know, that's so true because my perspective changed so much, even just in the beginning of treatment. I remember spending just a week in the hospital and then going in the car on the way home and just being home. Like you appreciate things so much more when you go through you know, tough times and when you're away from home and you go through cancer treatment and not feeling well, just the littlest of things you appreciate, just seeing the water, whether you can go in it or not. Like, I used to want to be like, oh, I want to travel here, this, 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 do all these crazy things. But I realized some of the best moments of joy from my life have just come from the smallest moments, like a little sunset, you know, little pockets of joy we have to find in our day. Yeah. And the things I appreciate nowadays are insane to what I would hold my standard up to just a few years ago. Yeah, I feel like everyone kind of got a taste with this with COVID about like being home and really like slowing down and appreciating moments. Um, But we got a really big taste of it and we're still we're still in it as people things are starting to open up and people are doing more. And for us, that hasn't changed yet, but it's really making us just appreciate so much like I said before what we have and not what we don't have and it's also made us pause like I feel like it's made us kind of stop and like not rush so much like all of us are always so stressed and anxious and there's things to do and we have deadlines and of course life still goes on and and 
it is, but now I feel like we've taken it, like, we're like, okay, let's pause. We're going to make a podcast. We're going to share our story. And it's made us do some of the things I think we wanted to do. Now we're like actually saying, okay, we can't wait. (laughs) Who knows about tomorrow? We've got to do these things and take a risk. I totally agree. Take a risk because you don't, if you don't take a risk now, when are you going to do it? Yep. And I know you have, Michael has a quote he wants to share too, because honestly. So I think a lot, a lot of things I learned in my cancer journey, I actually took from the show Avatar. Yes, the kids show. The the TV show. Because we watched it, you know, during my chemo. And there's so many things in that show that actually resonate with what I was going through. And Uncle Iroh had this quote, and it really hit me. And he says, destiny is a funny thing. You never know how things are going to work out. But if you keep an open mind and an open heart, I promise you will find your own destiny someday. And that literally hit me because before I was diagnosed with cancer that summer, I was going to return to college and I was like, I don't really know if this is what I want to do. I was telling my mom I felt lost and I was trying to find my purpose. And then I got diagnosed with cancer, which obviously you don't want that to help you find your purpose. But for me, it did. And my perspective changed because all of a sudden I was like, wait, this isn't the worst thing ever because... Now I found my purpose. I, in a sense, got what I asked for. Okay, okay, Mr. No. Avatar. What does Aang say? Aang says, when we hit our lowest <laughs> point, we're open to the greatest change, right? Yeah, and I that believe goes that's right. very yeah. true. We love Avatar. We love Avatar. <laughs> yeah. That is one thing I learned. What an amazing series. So we yeah. just, just want to touch on physical changes because we have talked about it in past episodes, yeah. how obviously the physical is not important and you guys we all know this and that certainly has been a big part of this year for us so we just want to touch on it like you know michael has been through so many physical changes and and he's still michael and it's so unimportant the way we look even though we all worry about it of course do you just want to like mention it briefly yeah i think one thing was i used to go to the gym a lot i used to have a nice body and i thought i was super strong but i realized now with my body being no muscle and literally super weak i feel like this is my strongest mentally and that's humongous and my perspective changed so much on looking at people's bodies and um, like my understanding more of what people go through and that it's not it's not always about looks and it never really is about looks yeah but you know you said something you said something the other day and i'm gonna repeat actually this is michael said this he said Sometimes he felt that he was insecure, but then he realized the only person that really cares is you. Yeah. Really the only person that's going to be like judging you is you. you. And we always think that it's other people looking at us saying these things, assuming these things, but nobody thinks about you as much as you do. So maybe somebody makes one comment one time and you can't stop thinking about it. Yeah. But the the truth is that person made that comment (laughs) and they don't even remember they said it. And you're just there like, oh my God. Exactly. This is a great transition into just really quickly not comparing yourself to others because obviously we all know it's true. Sometimes what is best for us is not the best for someone else. I feel like we're all on our own path. And sometimes we look at other people on Instagram, social media, anywhere, and we see them traveling. We see them doing these things, these fancy cars. And sometimes we feel like there's all this pressure to be what society will want us to be. And I know this... You know, you've heard this a lot, but a lot of times we stop asking ourselves, what do we want to be? And we just try to live up to other people's standards of what they want us to be and what success looks like to them. And, and we never really sit down in a quiet place and just ask ourselves, what do we want? You know, what's going to bring me peace? What at the end of the day, when I'm gone, is going to resonate the most with my life and what I've accomplished? We never ask ourselves, Wow, Michael. what do we really want? So deep. It is. because It I, is. I was I'm, thinking I'm about just it. blown away just a little bit right I was now. thinking about it last night when we were having that conversation. Yeah, we had a really deep conversation last night and I was with like, Jennifer. And I was like, I always wanted to, you know, be successful. Not necessarily be super rich, but, you know, have a good amount of money, have a nice car, live somewhere that's like, you know, a little bougie. Just, you know, have something <laughs> like that. But then I realized... You know, it's whatever is going to put you at peace that you should do. And I've kind of stopped thinking like all these material things. And I just want 
to be able to help others with my story. And I want to be a child life specialist. I want to work in a hospital. And I really want to spread awareness to these terrible diseases and just help people. And I always feel like helping people helps me. It's like a form of therapy. And that's really what I want to do. And this year has really taught me, humbled me, and shown me that whole new perspective that I have. Yeah. Wow. That was so deep and beautiful. Every mommy now, our hearts are very warmed. And I I love that you said all that. That is, I think every parent's dream is to hear their child, like looking for their inner peace. And that is so true. Like how many kids, I mean, child life specialist is not really what I thought when I thought of Michael. I thought, okay, cool surfer dude. He's probably going to get some kind of job that whatever it is that he can make enough money so he can go on surf trips and win surf trips. And maybe he still will, you know, we don't know, but I love that he really wants to help people. And I, yeah, that's very beautiful. I know this might sound offensive to you, mom, but my perspective changed a lot because I never saw myself opening up so much to my mom ever and being so close with her and telling her all these things. I always thought there was like things I had to like keep to myself, but now I really feel like I can tell my mom and my brother and my sister everything about what I'm going through. And I just feel so much closer to my family this year. That and is that's one thing that's changed a lot with going to something like this is you realize like I don't have like an ego I don't have like a reason to hide any of my emotions or anything in me I feel like I'm more open I feel like I'm you know I'm not I wouldn't say soft but I'm like you say it all the time I do what's the word you this say is it? what I say is like he's got this like mushy inside but he also has the soft outside he's like you know the box of chocolates <laughs> he's not mashed potatoes he's oh, like God. the nice soft chocolate it's like a milk chocolate and he's delicious and he's like better soft. be no dairy in there <laughs> no dairy and and mushy on the inside and and a lot of us have like this exterior shell that's hard and inside we're all soft and mushy but Michael has like this often mushy everywhere and it's actually kind of nice. It's, you know. Yeah. When we went through this, um, when your dad died, I we definitely were close. We definitely got closer and it definitely, you know, hard moments do bring people together. Um, but the difference this time, I think just because you guys are older, like... I did see you guys so close and so strong then, but I think just now, like, Stephen is an adult, he's 21, you're 20, Jennifer's 17, I feel like it's, like, even on a different level, and when I talk to you guys, you're just, like, I'm, I, I love that they're open adults that are sensitive and searching, and our perspectives have changed, and I'm a 52-year-old that in the last year, I learned so much. I, I thought I was evolved and spiritual and this year has just made it that much deeper i thank you for that michael kramer and jennifer and steven okay well another way my perspective (laughs) has changed is for some reason now i just feel the need to listen like when i've been talking to (gasps) nurses in the hospital especially i don't want to just say older people but yes older people well, that's because he 19 when he was diagnosed and 20. So pretty much everyone at the hospital is older than him. Let's face it. They always have interesting things to say and because they've been through a lot and have experienced a lot of life. And listening to their conversations and trying to understand and learn from them has been huge. Before I was diagnosed, it was like, you know, you say hi to somebody older, you give them the respect, whatever. But now I feel like conversations with people like that is always meaningful because they always have an interesting story to tell first of all or Always. lessons that they can teach you and it's really valuable i i love that because oh my gosh that you know that's one of the things that in our society is like sort of missing a little bit i would say because we um have a family and we go and we live on our own and in the olden days families lived with grandparents and great grandparents and depending on the culture it's still like that but not so much in america and you know, you've gotten also closer to your grandma. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And older people are wise. And I love that he is willing to listen and talk because communication, no matter how much technology is out there, communication is going to be key to life. It is key to life because why are we here if we're not connected and talking and with each other? Another way my perspective has changed is that you can be happy even though you're going through a lot. And that sounds crazy, but it's true. Like, throughout all this 
cancer stuff, throughout all of these GVHC treatments, throughout everything, there are days when I'm genuinely like just happy and life feels really good. And there are obviously down days, but I feel like before my perspective was, okay, once I'm healthy again, I can like be happy. It's kind of how like when we are going through school, we're like we're going through the school year, we're like, oh, once we get here, we'll be happy. Or once I get this car, I'll be happy. Once I get this job, I'll be happy. <laughs> Which means it's you're never going to yeah. be happy. <laughs> so I learned, that, I kind of learned that, you know, happiness is not, it's not like a destination. You don't just reach it. Because once you go through all that and you get there and you have that job and you have that car. You're going to want something else. Yeah. So that's just one thing I felt last night when I was just walking around living in the moment is that well, all we have is this moment and that's for a reason. I've learned to just appreciate the moment and there's because there's always so many things that you can worry about and there always will be things in life that you have to worry about and do like you know your job future assignments yes but the perspective is because you went through not knowing if you were going to be around tomorrow like i don't know to put it bluntly and so it really does make you really appreciate the moment and realize that if you're not happy now (laughs) when are you going to be happy and all of us are looking for happiness from the outside, and happiness is definitely an inside job. I agree very well. Yeah, and sometimes, uh, okay, I feel guilty saying it too. Sometimes I feel the same. I'm like, why I don't have the right to be happy. Sometimes people will message me and be like, I'm so sorry for what you're going through. It's so awful. And then sometimes I'll be like, oh my God, um, am I supposed to be miserable? But as hard as it is, there's like so many moments of joy and peace. Yeah, I think how I learned that was because I was like, okay, there's a possibility my life could never return to normal. There's a possibility things could get worse. There's a possibility that things will get better and I will get back to normal life. But I don't know. And if I just keep waiting on not knowing and let myself be miserable, that would make the rest of my life miserable. So I have to, I have to, like I'm forced to. And throughout this whole year, I've been forced to find things help me cope and make me happy my perspective changed so much oh my gosh i remember there's an ad that it's not where you are it's where you're going and i that just does not sit comfortably with me because the thing is you can prepare but you don't really know where you're going so hopefully where you are you can find peace with where you are in that moment too and it sounds goofy also i i wanted to say you listening to this you michael and me me mom you're stronger than you think you know i i michael was always this my sweet middle kid and again not that that defined him but he didn't like needles he was the one when we went to the pediatrician if he had to get a shot he cringed out of the three cringed the most and here he is the one that spends all the time in the hospital and He's so much stronger than he thought he was. And you can do anything. People tell us a lot of times, I know Michael feels this because we've talked about this, that sometimes people will say to me, oh my God, you're so strong. What a strong mom. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not strong at all. I'm just doing what I have to do. And I think you feel the same way, Michael. Yeah, that's true. And I think we are stronger than we often give ourselves credit to for being and this has this reminds me of when i had radiation oh my goodness yeah. perfect story i never thought i could do it like for example i just come off three rounds of chemotherapy that were really intense and i had to do total body ra- total body radiation and for that i had to stand up for like 30 40 minutes at a time and not move an inch like literally not move and i had to hold on to these two little poles on the side and I could not move because if I moved the radiation would hit my lungs so it had to be very precise I couldn't move and I had so much anxiety about it for weeks and weeks before and I was like there's no way I'm going to be able to do it like how am I going to do it but when the time came the doors closed everything shut and the big machine went off I was in there and I did it and I did every single treatment and I was able to push through and even now I'm like wait if I had to do that now could I do it? And I would still question myself. And that's one thing that I realized is we question ourselves and we really question our limits. And there's, we can go so much further than what our mind limits us to. And it's something that, you know, I think has resonated with me this whole past year. I never thought 
you know, I'll be able to spend this much time in the hospital, take this many medications, do all of this, get poked by this needle, this, that, all that. But somehow I am, and somehow I'm getting through it, and somehow I'm still alive. So it's just insane to me. My- Michael, like, totally, you hit it on the head. I don't even, like, we limit ourselves. I, like, I, I don't even know if you know you just said that, but that is what happens is we are so much stronger than we think. So you want to do something, you you can do it. I It's crazy how we think that we can't do something and when the time comes we can so we are telling you you can do anything because michael is now an avenger who would have thought hmm what else well there's one thing i don't want to admit but i will talk about lately i have been you know struggling and i've i've been complaining a lot not gonna lie just because it's been really hard the past few weeks with my leg pain going to the hospital so often at the end of the day there is someone who has it worse. Always. And even when you think no one has it worse, I mean, look at my life, there is somebody who has it worse. But because if you're able to think that somebody has it worse, that means you're still alive. Yeah. Sometimes it is good to like look at others and go, wow, okay, maybe I don't have it quite as bad as I thought. And um, I don't know if we can talk about this, but I remember a day, and I don't remember the date, June something, when... Michael was feeling really bad. His leg was really starting to hurt. He was having a hard time walking. He was really upset, and it was right after the building collapsed in Surfside. Right. And I was like, you know what, Michael? I'm sorry. It's true. Your life is so hard. But look, and we could actually see from where we were sitting by the water, we could actually see where the building is. I was like, look over there, because we are here. We have each other, and... It's a lot of... It really gave me perspective. Yeah. Because, you know, you could be struggling every day, but, you know, you're still here. There's a reason, and you sometimes you have to push through and remember... And we don't always know blessed. where we're going. Yes. Yeah. And we don't always know where we're going, right? But wherever this... Whatever you're learning now, it's taking you to, like, a path. I just believe that so strongly. One time I saw this Instagram quote... And it's like, if you're, it's a, if you're going through hell, why would you stop? Like, you keep going to get through it. And I always oh my saw God, that. I love that. I know, I saw that quote and like, like years ago, and I was like, okay, I kind of understand. But now I really understand. Like, there's no point of giving up on something you've worked so hard for, or fought so hard for, just because it gets difficult. And I feel like if you have a passion for something and want to get through something, like, and you've already done so much for it, you should never stop, and you should just push through because I know it's hard and it's difficult for everyone but that's kind of how I feel with my treatment it's like it is hell right now but you know I just have to keep going and that's something I've learned is sometimes you don't have a choice you should never stop because you've come so far and it sounds crazy it sounds like whatever but it's the truth if you're going through hell why would you stop exactly why would you stop got to keep going to get through it get to the other side that's a good one before we were kind of talking about like um, changing and and being adaptable, but I kind of want to say you cannot redo the past. Like sometimes with Michael, I've heard I've heard people say, "Oh my God, I can't wait till you're better and you can go back and surf again." And they're with the best intentions ever. Honestly, today with his knee, we don't know if Michael is going to surf again. He cannot re- he cannot go back and be the Michael he was before. Like I remember him saying that to me just a few weeks ago. He's like, "Mom, do you think my body's ever going to look the way it did before?" And it's hard for me to say this because I love him and I want to protect him and I want to hug him and tell him you're going to be just like you were before. But actually he's not. And actually he's going to be better because of everything he's gone through. I don't know if he's going to surf again. I don't know if he's going to be on a, you know, windsurf again, but I do know that he is a different evolved person and I don't really want him to go back to who he was before. I mean, if he can surf, that's awesome, (laughs) but I don't want him to go back to the Michael he was before because if he's gone through all of this and he winds up right back where he started, then what's the point? And I, I I believe there is a point. And the same for me. I mean, I don't want to go back to who I was before. I've been through these life changing things and... They're so hard, but they're so 
valuable and we're so blessed that we're going through these things in a way and supported and loved while we're going through them. So kind of talking about like spiritual things and how that's changed. I always, you know, meditated even before this, but I kind of realized the importance of it now. It wasn't really, I always meditated because I thought, oh, it'll just help me sleep. And now I started meditating because I realized it helps you live more into the moment and stop thinking about the future and in the past. And I know that it was always told to me that's why you should meditate. But I really understood meditating. It was like my first admission. I remember I had my this app I used on my phone and I just started playing the meditation music. And my mom and I just started meditating right before I was going to sleep in the hospital. And, and it became it became our ritual. It that, became a thing that yeah. every night just five minutes of meditation or just to slow down and remember where we are and that there's so many things you can worry about in the future, but we're just here right now, and that's all we have. Yeah, and you know, we have had so many people reach out to us and like say they're praying for us and they're sending us good energy and love and chanting or singing or dancing or whatever it is, and that is spirituality for me because for everyone it's different. If it's the universe, the angels, I don't know what you believe, but we do definitely feel this communal energy and... I've always felt like that, but I'm just going to say that this year it's been increased like a thousandfold. We all feel it so much and we really, really feel connected and we feel connected to you guys even without seeing you. And that's yeah. been that's been a huge blessing. Definitely. And I feel like spiritually, I feel like I've grown into a different person, physically and mentally, of course. I've had to find peace with myself and feel like my perspective was kind of different before. I thought more outside of the body than like inside the body. I kind of looked at external things with more importance and now I don't. And now I believe in more of a, I don't want to say balance, because like, <laughs> I know you're going to say like Dr. Galvez. Yes. But yeah, yeah, I believe in more of a balance with the external and the internal, trying to be as healthy as I can and also trying to be as mentally as healthy. And, and every night when we go out for a walk, there's always like a star. And we actually named the star after one of the BMT patients. And it's we would, the Fiona star. Yeah, and we would pray for her every night because she was going through a really rough time. Yeah. And was in the hospital for a very long time. And we still pray on the stars we see. Yeah. And I mean, also, my ritual is my morning run. It's like my meditation as well. I love meditating with Michael, but every morning I go on a run and I go through a list of names and also everyone that I go through like the people that are caring for us and I send love and gratitude and um like we said before we're not trying to be like oh my gosh we're on this like uh perfect plane because actually last night Michael had a huge like uh, uh, meltdown because it's been so hard physically and but the point is that even when he has that hard moment he can come back as opposed to staying there and same for me and that's also just because I think we've found a way to go inside when we need to and this morning when he got up he was like that was good for me to cry and it's about growth yeah you know? and it's not that anything yeah. has changed since yesterday his body didn't change since yesterday but he had a cry and then he's like now going back inside and finding his strength again and that's a big part of spirituality I think it's not trying to change what's happening but like finding a way to kind of deal with it yeah I totally agree with that yeah and I feel like whenever anybody not just me goes through something you know it's for a reason like it's gonna help you grow and of course I would not wish this upon anyone 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 however like I can't imagine not Life without it yeah right. I can't imagine not going through this and like Oh, sometimes we sound so corny and I, I know that, you know, we don't mean to, but it is true that it has been very eye-opening and way more good than bad. Um, and just doing this podcast is just like incredible and helping people is just like incredible. And oh my God, I want to say one thing, you guys, people ask us questions. If you have any questions you want us to answer please, please reach out because we want to make sure this podcast is interesting for you. So if there's anything you want us to talk about, 
Yeah, just slide in our DMs, you know. Always <laughs> ask us questions. Please ask us questions also on MikeLynnMomTalkCancer.com. You can, you can message us there. You can message us on our Instagram. But we want to make sure this podcast is interesting for you as well. And this is a goodbye from your host, Michael Kramer. Using his radio voice yet again. And I'll just use my regular happy voice. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. We're hugging you. We're grateful for the support. And we'll talk to you next week. Yes. Oh, we have a special guest. Do we? I think so. We might. Who knows? (laughs) You'll just have to see next week. Bye. Bye.